Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jason Heisler, and I am proud to be a part of Team Awesome. <laughs> now, you may be wondering, why did we call ourselves Team Awesome? Well, at first, it was a little bit of an ego boost, but we quickly learned it is because MCLP and this project really were awesome for us. So help me in welcoming Sri. Say hello, everybody. <laughs> Sharon, Lumi, and Jill. We were fortunate to partner with Heartland Community College. A little background on Heartland. They were the final community college to be founded in Illinois back in 1990. Their main campus is in North Normal, but they also have regional centers in Pontiac and Lincoln. Today, Heartland has 5,000 students that are pursuing a two-year certificate or degree. In addition, there are over 12,000 adults who are taking classes for personal or professional reasons. That's quite a bit of success. Heartland's mascot, Hunter the Hawk, thinks that's pretty cool. <laughs> But their president, Keith Cornell, was not satisfied. No, he wanted to find other ways that Heartland could engage the community. It was with this idea that they proposed a project with MCLP. <laughs> and those project goals were twofold. First, to establish more opportunities for their employees and staff and their faculty to engage in that community that they serve. Second, to increase the tracking of the employee engagement throughout the year. With those goals in mind, we began our project. It was a three-pronged proposal. First, we wanted to develop a community service day. One day that faculty and staff could go out into the community and serve in a project that they felt most connected with. Second, how do we get all these employees and faculty engaged or interested in volunteering their time? We had to have a good communication plan to do that. Finally, the tracking system. We also wanted to consolidate this information on the employee portal as well as give them an opportunity to track their service throughout the year. With some more specific details on our, on our community service day, I'm going to turn it over to Luby. Thank you, Jason. So, Harlem Community College Service Day will be on Friday, April 24, which is also the National Volunteer Week. Harlem faculty and staff will attend or engage in a variety of service opportunities that will take place off campus and in campus. Faculty and staff will receive time off so they can attend and participate in those um, great service uh, opportunities. Also, you notice um, a logo on the bottom of the page. Um, this logo was created especially for the service day by the Harlan marketing team. The creation was actually spearheaded by one of our MCLP So, this logo will also be on the t-shirts that we, uh, Team Awesome and the volunteers, will be wearing on the service day. So here is a picture of what the t-shirts will look like. Oh my. <laughs> Community leaders, educators, and 
and business owners who lead breakout sessions on different topics throughout the day on April 24th. Now I'll be talking about off-site service opportunities and about our strategic partners. The first one, Habitat for Humanity. Partner with people in our community to help them build or improve a place they call home. Some of the tasks they have for the volunteers include projects to restore, rebuild, or renovate front porches. The second strategic partner is Mark First. Mark First provides a continuum of services and support for families, children, adults through their lifetime, including residential, vocational development, employment, high school transition, and therapeutic supports for young children. The task they have for volunteers is spring cleaning. The third strategic partner is Wishbone. Wishbone Rescue provide care for rehome dogs, primarily pulling dogs from shelters in animal control facilities. Some of the tasks they have include kennel maintenance. The fourth um, strategic partner is Fed in Action. So there are no specific tasks for this service day, but they will provide orientation for Harlan uh, faculty and staff who are interested in future um, volunteer opportunities. A little bit of information about Fed in Action <coughs> provides spiritual, physical, and emotional support to seniors 60 and over and their caregivers to maintain independence, dignity, and improve quality of life. So next, Jill is going to be talking about um, community. going to be communicated to Heartland staff and faculty. Email blasts began last month and will continue monthly, including this, the week of service day. Currently, staff and faculty can go onto Heartland's employee portal to learn more about the service day through their community page. Staff and faculty will also see the event featured and receive updates via the employee portal as the event draws near. A photographer, videographer will be on site during the service day. Pictures and video footage will be utilized for promoting the Service Day event in 2021. Lastly, in March and April, the Service Day will be featured in Heartland's Hawkbeat newsletter, which is an online resource for staff and faculty. And now, Shree will talk to you more about Heartland's employee board. Thank you, Jill. Awesome. One key deliverable for our project happens to be the communications plan for the service day event. And uh, we definitely paid attention to detail. As Jill mentioned, we took care of the types of messages and um, had a fair understanding of uh, different audiences that it was going out to. And this one is a uh, communication that is going out to the employees and staff. Uh, the first recommendation going in is uh, from phase one. Uh, is coming out from Keith Cornell, the president himself, uh, going out to the employees, uh, talking about uh, the new uh, socially responsible program that has been introduced. Um, it's also going to talk about Hartland's uh, commitment to the community, um, the, the commitment to the serving needs of the community. A um, couple of changes um, that we will also make As part of phase one, as part of phase one, I uh, will be talking about the service. I am so sorry. Am. <laughs> All right. We'll be talking about uh, the event itself, uh, about when and where. Um, so it's going to be Friday, the 24th of April um, at the Pond Campus. Um, and the contact is Gina Grover. She's on the house somewhere. Uh, Gina Grover. Uh, will also be, uh, it coincides, the dates coincide with the National Volunteer Week. Uh, so we're going to put in some info about what that is. And there's a link out there for folks to explore. Um, 
and, uh, and the opportunities uh, that to serve that exist on that particular day. We're going to talk about that uh, on that website. And then um, for those who wish to volunteer, uh, there's a button for registration uh, that will take you to the sign of genius that's coming up front. And, and for future phases, we do have a couple of uh, talks that we have put in, and this is going to be a deliverable moving forward. Uh, so it's a little bit about the community service reporting for time um, that, uh, to uh, you know take credit uh, for, and then the upcoming service opportunities and a list of community partners uh, and all the good stuff. And that's the sign of genius um, link that we have. And up next is Sharon Awesome talking about next phases. <laughs> You know, that makes him three awesome. <laughs> we had a lot that we wanted to get accomplished with this project, and a lot of great foundational work has been done uh, in this space. But there are some things that we're going to be leaving behind to get accomplished, and those are in three different uh, areas, service day, self-reporting tool, and then the consolidation of the community uh, presence on, on their employee portal. So first I want to talk to you about the things that we are going to be leaving behind to help in the space of a service day. Service day has always been meant to be an annual thing and it always is meant to happen during the National Volunteer Service Week. So this year we focused on the main campus here in Bloomington uh, and in the Bloomington Normal area. The next phase will include, is intended to include the other two campuses, Pontiac and Lincoln. The other thing that we would like to do is, right now, is focused on faculty and staff. We want to eventually include in the students as well. The other thing we want to do is leave behind tools to help them to communicate about it and to help them to know when to do different things. So we'll leave behind a communication plan. And in that communication plan will be a lot of the things you saw with Jill, where we say, here are the communication touch points, when to do that, but we're also going to leave behind like a T-minus schedule so that they know when to start engaging these things, like when do we ask for our photographer, when do we ask for the videographer, those types of things. So we'll be leaving that behind. The other thing that we'll be leaving behind is uh, how to take the self-reporting tool to the next level. So we've begun the work, we've designed it out, and things like that. We'd like to be able to start Tracking, uh, tracking the volunteerism with the, with the faculty and staff starting in the school year of 2021. We, uh, we may, we can start doing it now, but what we may do is, um, what we're gonna start with is a static reporting form where they go out, they go and put their information in, and it goes into a, a spreadsheet until, that, until the long-term solution is available. So we're leaving behind what that should look like. But we're also, what they're also doing is they're going to create a more robust platform. Right now we're looking at different platforms that could be used so that it can be more dynamic, tied to different things with other resources within so that they can um, do it in a way that will track it and be able to use metrics and things like that. So the last thing um, that we'll talk about is the is the employee portal the communications page. What Shri showed you is our design for consolidating all of the community, community information that is uh, housed on their employee portal. He showed you our design for it. And as you saw on the side, the left side, there are different sublinks in there. Our initial will roll out the first two. That should happen in the short space. But going forward, they will roll out the uh, additional ones in more iterative fashion. So those are the things that um, we're leaving behind for them to help when they continue on the efforts in this space. So what gets measured gets done, and we decided that we wanted to make sure that we had some success metrics in place. What we set out to do was say, let's have 75% participation of all of the department staff in the, uh, in the community service day. We may or may not have that happen, but what we, uh, we've already started tracking the uh, orders for the t-shirts. 
And according to that, we should have about 150 to 200 staff on the first time going out with that. The other thing we wanted to do was establish three to five partnerships with opportunities for employees to, um, to volunteer. So the day of, at the same time, we will have people on site and then people that are going to be going out to the four, uh, the four organizations that we identified. So we met that goal by establishing four in the community. So there were a lot of people, a lot of professionals that helped make this awesome event uh, possible and make it a success. So we want to just give time to say an extremely thank, uh, thank you to uh, Gina. Uh, she is our liaison at Parkland and she has been with us every step of the way and has been an amazing partner. We want to thank Kelly Hill. Kelly was our uh, sponsor at HCC and again gave us amazing support. Laura is over there, Laura Sievers, and she is our, uh, is our advisor with MCLP. And she was honest, and she gave us such great support, and uh, we couldn't have asked for a better one. And then the last one we would like to say is thank you to Hartman's marketing team and their staff, their IT staff. They were amazing. And of course, you know, Reagan is with them, so we were pretty proud of that. They're even down to the board and, and Dr. Keith, everyone was just so supportive. So we just have to say a heartfelt thank you to everyone who made this possible. So at this point, I'd like to ask the team to come back on stage. And if you have any questions, we'll take those at this time. for other organizations to be involved and how do we get on that? I did know that question was coming. <laughs> so what I can say is for the for this year we pretty much have it set and we have it set down but again this will be an annual event so if you could just give your information to us we can pass it on to Gina for consideration for next year. Thank you, Team Awesome. Uh, I'm Pani. Quick question. It seems like storytelling and marketing seems to be a common theme across most of the teams working on these projects. Have you found anything that you've learned from or share with other project teams? Right, it is a common thing, and have we purposely gone out and said, hey, this is what we learned? I don't think we've purposely done that, but because this class, of course, as you know, is the best class that's ever <laughs> come through the program, <laughs> we all talk to one another a lot. So we talk through our projects, so in, organically that does happen. Limit to Adulting Day. I'll be interested. Do you want to learn about what's going on on Adulting Day or do you want to volunteer? That would be my question back. Well, yeah. I want to learn to change your time. So the <laughs> high school students will be attending Adulting Day, but the Heartland staff and faculty will be volunteering throughout the day in various roles to help them. So you mentioned that uh, 100. 250 people are participating in the first uh, event, and your goal was 75%. So what does 150 to 200 reflect in percentage? You're asking me to do math at sheets? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I'm an actuary. Yeah, I guess I do math. <laughs> All right, how many decimals do you want then too, sir? <laughs> it's, it's around, 20%. Uh, there are 900 faculty and staff at Heartland right now. 
do you know what? Actuaries are good at making those answers what you need them to be. So we really didn't specify when you wanted to get that 75%, so I'm stretching it to the full year. Because again, while we are, our project is focused on the one day, we expect the employees to engage with the community year round. And they're gonna be doing that on their own, as well as through the partners uh, that Heartland is, is associated with. So that tracking, I definitely see it being a lot higher a year from now as we record that. <laughs> for the um, faculty as well more than obviously giving back to their community like um, for example State Farm they have their uh, volunteering uh, grant that they give for if you get 40 hours in a year they give $500 to that organization obviously I don't think Heartland can do that but do they have something in place like that So again, this is a nonprofit organization, so they can't do things like that. However, for those who participate in the employee, uh, in the, in the service day, they will be doing so with uh, paid time off to participate. And um, coming up in the future, Heartland is so committed to the community that they are also working on giving standard time off for volunteerism. So my question. Oh, I'm sorry, I have one other. Did you not see the t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> my question is, um, I, I'm sure that many of the staff have been volunteering already. Did you do any baseline to see how many uh, faculty and staff are actually involved? Mr. <laughs> Mr. 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 <laughs> we certainly did, Barry. Gina did a survey during the summer before our project started for the faculty and found out that 48% already volunteered in the community one way or the other. So that was where we set our lofty goal of 75. It wasn't the whole staff that was uh, surveyed, but you know how surveys go. It was still pretty representative. This isn't a question as much of a comment, but as they continue to do that on an annual basis or even through the year, have they thought about maybe highlighting folks who are master volunteers or a way of using their newsletter to, that, that would be a way of incentivizing future volunteers? Okay, so. So the employee portal has different aspects to it, and part of those aspects are featured, uh, featured updates, featured highlights, and things like that. And one of the advantages of consolidating the community service portion of the employee portal is it opens the door for us to do things like that. So yes, that would be something that probably will happen in, in the future, um, and, that, and because of the work that's being done, it, it's now. select the four we started with a list so it was back in December wasn't Sharon or November Heartland actually put together a, a day for their staff to come in in the morning and learn about this volunteerism program that, that they're building up they invited probably 16 different agencies to have booths out in the Astral Center and the employees got to meet and, and learn about these, these organizations. It was from that list that we went and actually just talked to them and said, hey, we are gonna have this community service day. Would you like to be a part of it? What kind of activities could work out for the staff and faculty to participate and help your, your group? So from, actually we started with a list of eight, we whittled it down to four, and there you go. Jason. Team Austin, sorry, we have one more after. One okay, more comment. Sorry, don't count this against us, Christian. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gina from Heartland, and I was able to work with Team Awesome for the last nine months, and it has been an extreme pleasure 
And let me tell you, this team of five is changing the culture for our whole college, and they are going to make a difference in our community because of their hard work and dedication throughout this project. So thank you from the bottom of my heart.